Okay, it says I'm live. How long? I don't know. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Kathy. <laughs> oh, I think it's on together. <laughs> Hi. Uh, oh, let me see. Uh, I have to mute something. Uh, yes, and now I'm muted, YouTube. Sorry, sorry if I made an echo for people on YouTube. It looks like I'm live on YouTube. <laughs> I just had crisis before we went on. Oh, I was no. writing to my hobby, like, why do I have this stupid glare on my, uh, this crazy light? Can you see how it changes? Yeah. And then uh, he didn't have time to fix it. So he just slapped a banana on my table <laughs> and left. <laughs> and funny enough, when he slapped the banana, the light just changed to uh, normal colors. <laughs> so now <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to not laugh too, too hysterical because I really thought it was funny. Because he's an eye tech, you know, he's, he's like an I take tech vis wizard, you know, yeah, yeah. So that his solution to, solution to all this was just slapping a banana on the table and walk off. <laughs> but look how it does change the. Can you yeah. see? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, if anybody asks, what's up with the banana? <laughs> oh my God. Well, at least we got on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know why everyone's having problems. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Angel, Janet, Elaine, Carla. Today we're going to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> we don't really have anything like super planned. Um, but I'm thinking about I want to work with fluorescent colors. Mm hmm. And I am so lucky that Lindsay, the frugal crafter, she did a review of this very inexpensive, inexpensive set from Art and Fly. Okay. And I spotted that there are eight fluorescent colors here. And I was looking for, for fluorescent colors, yeah. but um, I didn't find it in the Art by Mylene sets. Um, I only had this tube from the uh, Arteza that got that hysterical white and ne uh, pink neon. Um, so I was actually lucky finding eight, a selection of eight half pans in this set. So I'm going to play with those today. <laughs> oh, good. Um, let's see, leave it there and it would look like you painted, oh my God, the banana. Yes. <laughs> And there actually is a sticker that I can hoard for the scavenger hunt book. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe that I finished off that whole book. <laughs> it's the first time that I'm terminating a, pro a, a project within the time frame. Oh. I'm always past, you know, even the DD composition book should be ending about this month, I think. But oh, wow. uh, I still got like half the comp book left. So I'm just taking my time with it. <laughs> well, yeah, enjoy it, eh? Yeah. No point in hurrying. <laughs> we're all, we're all um, cooped up anyway, so you may as well let it yeah. enjoy it, not, not put any more stress than needed. <laughs> exactly, because my book is about, you know, incorporating something fun that I see and then try and draw about it. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of dependent that someone tweets something funny or posts something funny on Facebook because <laughs> I can't come up with jokes by my own. So it's a slow progress. But with all these uh, Corona jokes going on, I try to collect them. So the only thing that I've been doing Corona-wise was... Um, 
<laughs> yeah, this <laughs> Corona time. Hopefully, coronavirus won't last last that long. Why? Because it was made in China. Yeah. <laughs> this one. What if they close the grocery stores? Well, we'll have to hunt for our food, and I don't even know where Dorito lives. <laughs> that was a Sharon post. <laughs> And then this one, I wanted to, my son had a birthday, so I was tracking down that giant package of toilet paper because that was like the hottest gift that you could give someone at that time. Yeah. So I tried to draw about it. And then I wrote, <laughs> happy birthday. What? You don't watch the news. Toilet paper is the hottest gift you can get in these times. <laughs> so that's kind of, you can say, my own joke. <laughs> that's good. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like really a homebody. Is it called that when you're a person who likes to be at, at home? So yeah. this one was really cracking me up. When you found out that your normal daily lifestyle is called quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. And then the, this is the latest page. <laughs> If you want to show off how rich you are, now is the time to TP your own house. And that's, <laughs> that's inspired by Janet. I don't, I don't even know how this developed, but it was a conversation between me and Janet where we talked about if you wanted to show off on your street, you could TP your neighbor's house. And then Janet so totally laid back, just replied, well, I don't care about my neighbor, but I'm going to TP my own house just to show off how rich I am. And it really cracked me up. It wouldn't be good because you'd have all these people run into the tree to take it down. Oh, you mean the scooting, lawn scooting neighbors? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that is so funny. And then this one, quarantine, it was from a Sharon Facebook uh, post. First time in history we can save the human race by laying in front of the TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're telling you to be a couch potato. It is while we're being heroes, you know? <laughs> so. And then the next one I'm thinking of pondering about is something like, I remember in the New Year's, we all were talking about, yeah, 2020, that's going to be like our year, you know? <laughs> so I want to, I saw something funny about that. I want to incorporate it in the, in the drawing, like New Year's Eve, she's standing there with her New Year's hat on saying like 2020 is going to be my year. And then the next frame should be her in March wiping her butt with coffee filters <laughs> something like that to show that that did not happen so that's the next one that i got in mind yeah but I'm, I'm working in it when i think i have something i want to share and not pressuring myself to figure out something fun each day because that's impossible i mean <laughs> Nobody has that much to laugh about in their life every day that they can pick out a yeah to draw. So, so you're going to be doing the face today? Yeah. You know what? I'm really studying this fluorescent uh, colors. Mm -hmm. I hope the camera, oh, it doesn't. Bummer. I knew it. You know what? Fluorescent colors doesn't show well on camera. On even if you try to photograph it. Yeah, I think it's the chrome. And then, <laughs> this, maybe if I lift up the book, what I want to share, share with you <laughs> is that <clears throat> I use the same mass tone of orange fluorescent here with mm -hmm. a light background. And then I use the same mass tone with a muddy, uh, muddy darker background. And that really makes it pop. Maybe yeah, the camera will make it justice. Yeah, so if, if you gray <laughs> down your your uh, fluorescent color, that's what complements it. It is, and I think it's worth experimenting with, like mm -hmm. having something dark next to a fluorescent area. Uh, like, oh, the camera doesn't even show it, but this here is bright yellow, 
like like one of those uh, uh, markers you use when you have to um, yeah the highlighter yes a highlighter that's actually highlight yellow just a smidgen and I also got highlight yellow on the chin here but I kind of experiment with uh, how how do I make that fluorescent glow because up here it's glowing in my eyes it's like vibrating yeah <laughs> so it's crazy and uh, <clears throat> now comes the embarrassing truth about all this I saw I saw a documentary about LSD yeah <laughs> and this guy uh, the journalist was asking like how was it can you explain the experience and then he said something really remarkable he said well it's kind of strange to uh, describe because it's like the sixth sense meaning that you can see things and then he described this and it sounds so amazing i can't forget it He's, he was watching a plant and it was like he can see uh fluorescent colors vibrating around the living tissue of the plant like, like it was dancing. and then when he touched the leaf the colors changed uh, and i know all of that is a chemical reaction going on in his brain but just imagine that our brain is capable of creating a visual scenario like that so i was thinking how would he paint it like it has to be painted I mean, it sounds so awesome. <laughs> so I'm thinking about playing with these fluorescent colors with a muted, muddy background mm -hmm. and trying to make skin tones dance. Like, what if I could make his nose, like, like stand out so much that it's almost like vibrating, like vibrating um, hysterical colors, <laughs> like that angle right there. So... That's my quest with all this fluorescent. Uh, well, I think yeah. that's neat. That's, I have seen some people do those in it's uh, amazing. portrait. And it's really, really beautiful looking when it's done. It is. I've, I've actually been playing with chroma colors. Hang on yeah. a second. I might knock over a jar or something because what I'm going to fetch now is attached <laughs> to a, 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 a background. <laughs> this is a giant thing that I'm working on. Oh wow, that's gorgeous. And oh, I have to remove stuff. Look how the chroma colors. Oh man, you can't see it. It's okay, you can't really see it, but up here is really right in your face yellow. Like look beautiful we get the banana packet. <laughs> you can actually see now with the bananas in the camera that this part here is glowing because of the black uh, tube here yeah and if i get the banana in here <laughs> her her face is also vibrating um it's like magenta magenta red here it doesn't really show up on on my camera but when i look at this that i have painted with <laughs> magenta chroma colors or what's it called it looks so funky i mean it, i can't stop looking at it <laughs> because it's like dancing and i got a mixture of very uh, black um backgrounds like very black things mm -hmm. suddenly po popping up with the uh, fluorescent colors oh my god this is like really horrible showcase <laughs> here let me put you in the big let's see if i can do this okay let me see if i can uh, can i somehow turn my camera nope. oh man now you're gonna see that foot and everything. Like this is like really huge, right? Uh, and now we got the glare of the. Oh, I can't. Window. This is humongous. Uh, I was gifted from CB these uh, X-ray pictures. I think it's Tim Holt Infirmera. Oh and yeah, I remember those. Yeah. When, when I unboxed them, I thought that the pelvis 
looked like a butterfly shape. So I immediately knew because I had my fire removed that one day I'm gonna make a piece of art where the pelvis is uh, symbol symbolizing the my removed thyroid. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. cool. It's got meaning. Look at that. That's like chroma color backed up with a black background. Makes it look like like I don't know. It just makes it look so cool down here also. Yeah. Uh, so I don't have like a ton of highlights. I try not to make them white, white, like this one is white. Mm -hmm. But I want to play more with this, what's going on down here, where it's like really um, shining through the dark top layer. Yeah, like a fluorescent. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So that's actually what's going on. And that's why I'm playing so much with the fluorescent colors at the moment. I did try and make her lips be like really fluorescent, but I had to stop at this value because otherwise it wouldn't fit yeah. with, the, with the face. But I was really like, ah, oh, bummer, because <laughs> I was ready to go in with like really uh, like an orange mixed with the, the opera rose kind of color. Yeah. But this is acrylic, and the uh, acrylic dries up so beautiful mm -hmm. compared to watercolor. Um, yeah, and you can go back over it with any color you want. You can, <laughs> and, and if you manipulate it with matte medium, you can make it so transparent mm -hmm. and really work in uh, that yellow tone because all of this was started out with yellow. Actually, this yellow up here to begin with. Yeah. So <laughs> you'll have to take a picture of it, then we'll get the true color of it. Yes, yes, because this area right here, I am so proud of it. It doesn't really show, but when I look at it at nighttime, it's like her oh. cheek is glowing. That'd be cool. Um, and I was just lucky with the perfect mix of the magenta and the Indian yellow mm. to get that area. <laughs> and now it's at that state. You know, that famous state that don't touch it. <laughs> Should I? Shouldn't I? Shouldn't I? <laughs> yeah. What's Slap your hand. <laughs> <laughs> I need to uh, incorporate more pipes. And then I bought a die set from, um, I showed it at my last call. Maybe I can grab it while I'm sitting here. I bought a die, die set for my big shot, so I'm going to punch out some gears to attach to these uh, pipes. And then, of oh, course, yeah. these pipes are going to have a silver top painting and Y highlights, but I'm not sure how crazy I should go with highlighting because they need to be very dark. Yeah, it so, depends on what your um, emphasis is going to be on yeah. the face more because you don't want to take away from that yeah so i was thinking about dark bronze um is what's like nails like a like, like just, a rust yeah like yeah like a rust and then just uh, get small uh in indentations of nails mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be not so in your face <laughs> okay Okay, I'm gonna try and turn the camera. Ooh, you <laughs> okay, back. <clears throat> so today I'm not going to focus on getting like a really cute and perfect drawing down. I just wanna have a face like this to work with. Yeah. And then I'm going to experiment <laughs> with muddying up a background by using gouache because is if there's one thing that I'm really good at, that's making mud with gouache. Um, <laughs> I got, got special talent there. <laughs> so, that's actually why I enjoyed that 60 set from Arteza because I really stink at mixing colors with gouache. And then I have tried, oh my Lord, this is my original gouache set. It doesn't look like I used it much, but I, it, to my defense, it's they're like really big. It's like jello. Yeah. 
jello size pants so as you can see i i did really i have really tried with these colors and there's to begin with a lot here compared to a limited palette mm -hmm. but yet i i still struggle with the mixing uh with gouache <laughs> so you're pretty good at mixing colors it's just a matter of playing with it you'll get to it yeah i, I hope to uh, get some nice mud today and then uh, i have a, another confession which is <laughs> i'm so frugal that i can't make myself i mean some people would throw out these i've been working with these tubes for a long time and now i really have to make an an effort in emptying them out. Some of them still got amounts in it that I can probably squeeze out in a tiny half pan. But um, I like to work with Bosch when it's wet because yeah. I have a tendency to put too much water on my brush. So I avoid thinning down my uh, gouache if I work with it fresh from tube in, and not in a, in a pan. And then <laughs> when this set looked like this, I was con convinced that, yeah, I, I really used up my products, so I'm allowed to buy uh, a new set. But then <laughs> <laughs> they came up with the watercolors. So oh, yeah. I picked up the watercolors instead. So now I got this other excuse of, hey, then I'm also allowed to buy the new gouache set, you know? <laughs> so <Yeah>. I think, <laughs> But my plan is to really try and empty out the, these tubes before I buy a new set. And look, how can anyone throw yeah, out? Yeah, that's like half a pan yes. right here. And, and lots of them are like that. Uh, of course, the white and the black were the first to go. So I just uh, bought a large tube of Pebeo white gouache. Really a good idea. If you're going to gouache, <laughs> get enormous amounts of white oh yeah so <laughs> that's what i do i usually color my white yeah yeah with the watercolor yeah. and then then i don't have to have a billion tubes <laughs> <laughs> we have a question in chat asking what is gouache ah oh, good question what what i feel is that it's a very opaque water soluble media it's like the pigments are grinded less fine than in watercolor so the pigments are bigger i have never tried professional gouache only very uh, inexpensive student grade gouache so i think that mine are filled with a lot of fillers but i know that the professional gouache from especially winston newton was the first uh, on the market with designer gouache got that's very flat matte mm -hmm. uh, look. I know that they are having much finer pigments and less filler in their product than this. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. It was made for people yeah. who are doing a graphic work where you take prints of it. Mm -hmm. and, um, I recently bought. This is a set from Arteza 24 gouache colors. No, not 24, 60 gouache colors. And then I uh, bought Arteza's 60 watercolors. And then because I know that the gouache set came with two tubes of white and several pearl shimmery gouache, I was wondering what's the difference between the watercolor set and the gouache set? Because Already in the range of tubes, I knew that there were at least bound to be um, some of them that are, that are deviating. So I did actually recently swatch out my Arteza watercolors and then my gouache underneath. And the question, what is gouache? And then I say it's a more opaque medium where a lot of white and bigger pigments makes the... Um, the color more op opaque i can maybe yeah. illustrate like this this is the Arteza watercolor can you see how it's really transparent and this is the gouache it's more saturated in its mass tone yeah it, but it's still not like super opaque it is transparent 
but you can really get look at oh my god look at that ultramarine in gouache it is so so beautiful can we get yeah. the banana tissue <laughs> I think you should write on that banana. <laughs> <laughs> My camera is not doing it justice, but this is a very beautiful ultramarine in the gouache, and I'm not able to get that same depth in, in the watercolor. Mm -hmm. That's what I experienced with the Arteza product, is that you really get some beautiful saturated mass tone, but it's still transparent. Can you see how the transparency is very similar? Yeah, you can. Yeah. yeah. And normally, I think with really good artist grade gouache from Holbein and Winsor and Newton, it wouldn't be that transparent. Now it's unfair because yellow and magenta is always transparent. But if we look at some of the other colors, like that one, I think it's more opaque with the... Yeah expensive i have never tried um artist grade i know m gram gouache is really popular in the state uh, this is like a typical gouache swatch where you can see the watercolors transparent and the gouache give you the ability to get this really matte surface yeah and it's non-shiny and it's i don't experience them as chalky and they don't smear off Oh, um, that's good. Yeah. But this is just one manufacturer of, you could say, inexpensive gouache. Then we got the Chinese ones. These do smear off. You can, like, scratch, and then you get the pigment on your fingers. All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> but they are very, except for the magenta and some of the yellows, they are really opaque like you can you can really cover um like when when you work with acrylic like you can work on top of a dark color with a lighter uh, color i can if i'm really good <laughs> do it with this set but the issue is that i really have to watch how much water i got on my brush so flat brushes works for me um an example flat brushes like this and not brushes that got like natural hair and soak up a big barrel of water so even though it's nice to paint with this uh, it doesn't really work for me when I'm working with gouache <laughs> so, this set I have had for almost two years and it was uh, sold in this um, container that claimed to be airtight lid and in the oh. beginning i did spray them with water before i put the lid on and i even put uh, baby wipes in to mo keep the pans moist mm -hmm. but then you know there just comes a time where yeah <laughs> yeah then I, I stopped caring so much about keeping them wet but even though that i have had this set up open on my desk and even forgot for hours and I don't really uh, am hysterical about putting the airtight lid back and moisturizing I want to show you this the gouache is still wet underneath this surface it's amazing oh wow yeah let me see look how you can can you oh, see wow. it? yeah it is freaking amazing. <laughs> I wonder if they have honey in it or something. I don't know if it's, yeah, it's not glossy. Like, you know, like, like it's honey, I, it may be glycerin or. Yeah, maybe. But since it's China, that doesn't really come with a description of. No, <laughs> I'm even scared to say what's in it. <laughs> But I just wanted to show how it looks like it's solid, but underneath it's still, this one is kind of solid. The one out here in the edges get more, more air. The oh. one in here in the middle get less air, so they, they are still soft. Huh. But it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it must be, yeah gum Arabic, maybe. Yeah, or, you know, they use all kind of... Uh, like, I don't know, fish oil, and <laughs> they use all kind of weird stuff 
yeah. uh, in Asia as binders. Yeah, that's true. So I, I definitely don't think it's honey because it's, it doesn't got that shiny, like uh, I, I made my own homemade watercolors where I, I use Sennelier honey watercolor um, mixture. <laughs> And yeah. they got this uh, shiny gloss to the pan, like 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 one of these. Can you see this one? It's got like this shiny look to it. Yeah, it's like the M Grammar, like that. Yeah, you can just feel it. it looks like juicy, mm -hmm. and they dry up like really like chalky, like I don't know, <laughs> with no gloss or sheen on them. Hmm. It's interesting though that they'd stay the, that wet. Yes, for that long. And some people like to use squash when it's dried up in pans and uh, some don't. I just, uh, I, I tend to add too much water when I have to work with a dry, dry, uh, dry squash. <laughs> but it's a matter of skills. I'm telling yeah. you, like if I was like really better at Doing this, it wouldn't be a problem working from dry gouache at all. But <laughs> it's a matter of skill and temperament, I think. Well, most, I, I find most art things, you have to be patient with yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can't rush it. And sometimes looking at your tools help. Like, I know for sure that I cannot use a brush like this uh, for gouache. So to help me along with a better result, I always go for flat rectangular br brushes. <laughs> so uh, is it called a filbert if you're oil painting? You know, like regular, oh, mine all stiff, regular, this is soft flat. Steel, but a flat one. Yeah. That works for me. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, really, um, you don't, with um, gouache, you don't really need that soft. No. And um, one of the other things that I struggle with is mixing. Oh, man. First of all, the layer underneath is reactive. So you can come in weeks after and trying to make an overpainting, and then you're lifting up the layers yeah. underneath. Yeah. I think it, I, you you lift it up even more than you does with regular watercolor. Yeah, I find it's more or less an end thing you do before. <laughs> and then because in my cheap uh, versions of gouache, there's a lot of white in it. So it just looks strange when you start lifting up the white layer underneath. Yeah. I mean, you can really make a lot of fuss with it so here on this style i'm trying to make that disaster work in my advantages by going for that look you know like just like giving up caving in <laughs> admitting that uh, you can't uh, but i can go for that grungy look and try and make it work for my uh, advantage so <laughs> that's the plan for today <laughs> go for it <laughs> Yes. Let's see if there are any questions about the gouache and chat. Um, gouache, scarlet, or watercolor. I'm looking for the word crack because I was assuming that someone would talk about how they crack in pans when they dry up uh, because they do. Oh my God. And it's so annoying. Not to be what must be more of a chalk or whatever they use for the filler. <clears throat> yeah. Or clay, maybe. I don't know. My very, very first pan squash. Oh, what, can you, what can you call it when you squeeze out stuff and, and put it in a pan? My very first dry pan squash is this super annoying to work with. Look how it's just chips <laughs> off. It's uh, hot as a rock. I, I mean, it's- You have to it, soak it for a while. Yes, I do. And and then when I soak it, I pick up with the brush clumps of pigment. So you really oh. need to mix in a, 
in a pallet. You cannot, you, of course, you can't go straight to paper, but I wouldn't recommend going straight to paper. Um, so it's, for me, it's... I don't, it's so I don't think that uh, your artist grade gouache cracked that much. Me either. No. Because look at this, this is like, <laughs> really crumpled into yeah. several pieces. So you get little bits and pieces and yeah. so you're doing a lot of work for just that one little bit of paintbrush color. And I have not dropped this on the floor, but I imagine if I did, it would just <laughs> jump out, you know, and spread itself in thousand pieces. So, but that's what I really dislike about gouache is that it's, it really dries up with a tons of, of cracks. And, and now the other thing is that when you moisture uh, a cracked pan, yeah. the water uh, goes down into the valleys of the of the cracks. Yeah. So it takes like forever <laughs> for this mm -hmm. one to dry up when you're done with a, a painting session. So that's why I kept it in this open palette because if, if I had it in something with a lid, I could imagine that I would shut the lid close too early. Mm -hmm. And then I have read about people getting fungus in their gouache. Um, yeah, depending on what water you're using. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's the explanation why I got it in this open flat lid, because the drying time really can be sometimes two days, depending on how how much Grand Canyon you got going on in your, yeah. in your pants. <laughs> <laughs> so really those ones would probably be better used uh, fresh than dried oh yeah. yeah and when you use them fresh um like i do you feel that you're splurging because you just squeeze out what you need yeah. and that's why products like Atesa in my world is fantastic because it's less expensive so I can yeah. splurge. I don't feel like. Uh, yeah, you don't mind doing it with a lesser price. No. Yeah, but with the real expensive stuff, yeah, you kind of hesitate because. Yeah. Oh you my know, God. You'd squirt out is a pan's worth. You'd be able to use that for a year. <laughs> and and you know what? I'm guilty of wanting to use up that so i destroy my artwork because i want to use up that yellow so i mm -hmm. put in too much yellow have yeah. you, you know what i mean <laughs> yeah i know i know i'm that same way i'm frugal <laughs> <laughs> and i know it's so stupid because it's just paint and then i remember i was talking with it with my hubby and then he said you know what? He once visited a guy who, um, one of his friends, some of his friends are really uh, creative people. Mm -hmm. And he told me about his working um, man cave where he <laughs> had like tubes this size with acrylic where he just splurged out <laughs> on newspapers. And he had newspaper pallets just lying all over the place with dried in acrylic. Oh. And, stuff. and w when I hear about, uh, like something like that. <laughs> yeah. First of all, I think it's a waste of product, but I could never work like that. And then my hobby was talking about, but maybe he needs that to loosen up. And I can True. understand it. Uh, Depending on how he works too. Maybe he's um, likes using big brushes or like yeah. a really thick paint. But I, 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 I'm too frugal to... Uh, <laughs> Just be like that. I would feel that I was a pig with my supplies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good thing everybody's different, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> but some people need to be that loose to feel in the zone of being an artist, I think. Maybe. True. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. So maybe that's got their own little way of doing things that loosens them up and puts them in the zone and yeah i see that janet put in a link in chat for a blue container and it must be gouache if that's the one i'm thinking of that i saw um a youtube video about that is so cute it's the cutest set it comes with these yellow um packaging also where you take off the top oh, lid and then it's a, a sealed airtight proof um palette oh cool 
And then when I saw it, I just knew that, oh, when that's empty, you can reuse it for other things. Oh, yeah. Awesome. It is. All right. What I'm going to do is negative painting. <clears throat> so if anybody wants to join in, um, I think Colleen was wanting to do fish. <laughs> So what I thought I would do is uh, I don't want to get too complicated with color. So we're going to just concentrate on an Angal uh, Angalis? Oh, I can't even say it now. A galaxy? No. <laughs> I can't think of one side of the of your um I can't think of the name. I can't say the name. I'm tongue tied today. So the blues to the greens. Algus. <laughs> you asking me for help? <laughs> help. I'm sitting here with a banana. <laughs> so so from yellow to green to blue. And that way you don't make any mud if you stick to just those colors. You can do it on the same side too. You can go from yellow to red and you won't mix any mud. <laughs> oh, I like that idea. Actually, I think that Prima has worked with that theory when they're making their small 12 of, you know, the, the small sets they come with, yep. with 12 pans in. Because yep. have you noticed that some of them are only warm or only cold uh, tones? So it's almost impossible to make mud. So we're going to start off with just making a um, a fish. <laughs> you know, normally, uh, once you get going with this, do this a few times, you won't have to put in your um, drawing. But just so that you guys see what I'm doing, and it is a little easier if you draw it out first, and then you won't get confused. So you can do a, a few of these fish if you want. You can do them in different um, positions, um, different tails, whatever. Uh, I think I'll put some fins on some of mine. Maybe a bottom fin. Oh, so you're going to do the negative painting today with the fishes? Yeah. Oh, perfect. I love that. It's fun. It really is fun to do. And you can do this with any any object you want. You could, you could even use your stencils is a good idea. So if you were to get, say, um, one of the stencils that are, um, let's see if I can find one. So if you get something that's not too complicated, you could use leaves like these. Oh, yeah. And, and do the same thing. Well, yeah. if you have a mask, is even better instead of a... So you, you're, then you could actually paint around that mask. You don't have to draw it out. I've done that with the people one. There's one of the masks of people standing. And that turned out really cool. Um, let's see. Something like, um, let's see it. Like this here. You could do this. And then do it again in the background, but it's, a, it's going to be a different color. Um, so there's always different ways of doing this. I love so, the idea of using a stencil. Yeah, it, it turns out really cool. Now with this, I'm going to use watercolor, but you can use acrylic paint too, or even um, now some people say you can use oil, but I don't see that. 
because you're painting over top of things and if you want to leave the color it's going to muddy your colors up so you'd have to let it dry in between so that would take like a very long time to do one in oil <laughs> so just wet your paper and the first bit i'm going to do is yellow and i'm going to color my whole paper yellow So you're working like light to dark? Yeah, with watercolor, you have to work light to dark. You can't. Yep. But if you're using acrylic, you can do dark to light. You can go medium and then go both ways if you wanted to. You actually have uh, a lot more possibilities of, of uh, working with acrylic. So the next thing I want to do is these fish are going to now stay yellow. So I want to take a color a little bit darker. So let's go into um, a green yellow. And you can make it um, fairly pigmented. You don't have to have it too watered down because um, you do want to see the differences between it. So you just color your whole area except the fish. Now, once you get used to drawing in the negative, then you can start um, putting your your initial beginning coat in different colors if you wanted to. And then you um, change each layer you do by the color that was laid down first. It's really interesting. But I would strongly um, try this way first. Don't get too much into different colors all at once because it does get a little confusing. So try to do these first. So you could do leaves, you could do berries, looks really cool. You do twigs, trees. And if you get any um, blooms or runbacks, don't worry about it because you're going to be going over your background many, many times. So now I want to put some more fish in. So to make it look really um, with depth and stuff, overlap your fish. So we can have, say, the fish going overlapping this front fish. So we're always going back to the background of your painting. You can make them smaller or bigger. doesn't matter. Just do whatever you want. It's a nice shape to work with the, you know, very so, simple. <laughs> yeah, just very simple. Now I can add a little bit darker color. Now I'm going into more of um, a little more green. on the green side and you don't want to go over any of these fish that you have drawn i'm 
sorry to interrupt, but I, you know what, I showed this haul on my last stream. I bought this uh, drawing sketch from Arteza. Yeah. And then, <laughs> then after the end of the stream, I was unboxing it for the first time. I noticed that, hey, why are there like small handles here? So I tried to lift it up and then, <gasps> da -da, there were more pencils underneath. <laughs> you didn't know that? I forgot, but you know what? Look at the tin. It says like 33 pieces, and there's like nowhere that's like 33 pieces here. <laughs> so Have I you just tried them yet. Uh, I unboxed them Tuesday, so I've only been painting one thing with it, but I haven't tried the cotillion or the kneaded eraser. I only tried the pencil sharpener, mm -hmm. and it. it Okay, it's unfair. I sharpened a charcoal pen with it, and it didn't. I, I, I was really nervous. It felt like it was cracking up, you know, like. Um, yeah. They're hard. They're hard to sharpen. I think so too, yeah. but I'm spoiled. I'm used to this Faber Castell one, so it's hard to compete with this one. <laughs> yeah, when you get used to one sharpener, you tend to stick with that. It is. And because with the Faber Castell, I can twist the sharpener around the pencil instead mm -hmm. of the pencil in the sharpener. So I think that's what I did wrong. You know, I'm used to uh, sharpen where I only move the sharpener and not the pencil. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So. Oh, you learn. <laughs> So I just keep doing the fish. Okay, let the fun begin. I have to make mud, right? <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> you believe it? One of the most successful mud I have ever made with gouache is when you lift off with the paper. I can I can uh, demonstrate. Actually, when you when you try and splatter with gouache, it always uh, doesn't succeed. <laughs> so when you re want to regret it and lift off the splatter with paper, you're lifting up everything from the page. Uh, so yeah. if you keep layering on that effect, I think I can get myself a very muddy textured background. So uh, I'm just going to jump in and go for it. That's all yeah. you can do. That's how you learn. Yes. <laughs> So I'm I think I'm going to give myself um, some green tone background and then come on top of it with some toffee, lift it off, yellow, lift it off, and then see what dark tone to lay on the very top of it. That's a good plan. Sure. And then because uh, we are so frugal, I'm using these tubes up. I'm going to squirt it out directly to the page, which is how not to do it. So uh, don't uh, think that this is the way you should do things. <laughs> Seriously, you, you're really going to get a super saturated spot when you do things like that but it's because i really want to use up these tubes so i can feel good about trashing them <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna pile it on <laughs> yeah you won't believe how long it's been taking me to use up that set you think you can do it in like two weeks you know <laughs> like but it just keeps going on and on and on. <laughs> so you purposely make all these mistakes? Yes. <laughs> I, Aline says, I need one of those toothpaste thing that rolls the tooth, tooth, tubes up. You, you mean that tube ringer? Yeah, I did ring the tubes to begin with, you can see, and then I just squeezed them. But it is true if, if I... Uh, Push it through one of this. Yeah, I, my hand oh, yeah, I can see it really. Now there's like half a half pan up there already. 
which is good or bad when you try to use it up. <laughs> it's surprising what's left in those. I think it, done and there's actually quite a bit left in them. And in watercolor, it's really a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. um, that's one of the mediums that's very, um, what is it called? Uh, like a, a little goes a very long way. Yeah, I'm going to mute myself. I'm going to dry this. Yeah, then uh, I'll say something really fantastic. <laughs> but basically with the gouache, I talk so much about not watering it down too much because then it actually becomes like painting with watercolor. And in my head, I'm thinking like, well, if you want it, to be and behave like watercolor, then why don't you just grab watercolor to begin with? <laughs> so I really um, think that I gave this too much water and need to somehow either be super quick with my next application. And now you may wonder why am I bringing in the background into his skin tone? I think it's uh, a habit because I don't like uh, harsh lines like that from one white page to so I always try and mix in instead of uh, softening out the edges I try to invite the background color into my uh, subject so in my head, I call this the marriage, where I merge my um, focal point to my background. So right now we are marrying <laughs> the face to the background. Good enough for me. OK, now let's demonstrate that splatter technique I was talking about. Let me get a wet brush. Let me go with a little darker green. We want to make mud, so maybe I should deliberately bring in some of the toffee colors. I'm gonna, there you go. Where is it? We got a tan color here. Have you tried um, using your fluorescence and then trying to gray it down? Oh, that would be awesome. The opposite color to this green should be something reddish. Mm -hmm. so try and take the pink, reddish, the most red, <laughs> or maybe even the purple in this case. But let's see if we can. Thanks, guys. It's coming. Okay, I know that I'm just dotting it in, but I'm trying to make the fluorescent watercolor merge with the the gouache underneath to see if it gives me a brown. Hmm. Okay, and look. Then when you take paper and try and dot it off, you get this textured look because you're returning to the white paper. That might be cool with a sponge too. Oh yes, because then you would avoid getting these paper uh, <laughs> things stuck. But now I can work on top of this uh, white paper with a very clear color and I'm thinking yellow um, to make that area pop. Mm -hmm. Okay, normally when I pick up gouache from a palette, I got my flat brush, I dip it into water 
I like to take off the excess water. So now it's not wet, it's just moist. And then I take the fresh gouache and apply to my brush. And that's how little water I like to uh, apply to my uh, gouache media. I feel that I can control it more like that. Then it doesn't become as liquid as watercolor. There's definitely a learning curve with it. It is. Oh, I remember the first time I was trying acrylic. <laughs> I'm a very slow painter, so it dried up on the pen. Like, and I was getting frustrated. Like, how can it? Do I feel that I have to like hurry myself up? What did you start out with? A, a starter set from the supermarket for kids. <laughs> yes, I think it's called Marie's uh, Marie something. Very inexpensive, and it smelled a little bit funny. Is that the first type of paint of any kind that you tried? No, the very mm -hmm. first one was really discouraging. I bought it at the gas station. I know, I know, I've, I've done all <laughs> the wrong things. I bought a, a palette from Stetler, and Stetler used not used, but really is making fabulous pens, Stedler yeah. fine liner pens. So of course, when you recognize a brand, you're, you're thinking, ah, oh, then then the watercolors must be like excellent, right? Like the mm -hmm. pen. <laughs> and <laughs> it was the most chalky chemical set that I've ever tried in my whole life. Oh. It was horrible. I couldn't mix. I saw videos on YouTube where they took a blue and a red, and then they got purple, and I was thinking magic. Then I try it with my Stettler chalky set, and I didn't get um, purple, I got mud. And then the, I remember the yellow was not moving, so you couldn't like uh, like make it feather out with water. Mm -hmm. so all the things I saw people do where they took green and then dabbed in some yellow and then got a nicer green, uh, I, I couldn't get those effects. And of course, I, I wanted to try and paint trees and plants. Mm. <laughs> so I was so frustrated. And then uh, I went to a real art store because my hobby said, why don't you just buy your stuff where normal people buy their art supplies in an art store? <laughs> <laughs> and I almost flipped backwards when I saw the prizes. Oh, yeah. Um, but... With his help, I came home with Schminke watercolor, not knowing that, you know, that was the deal. <laughs> and then it really jumped off. I mean, then I really, you, you know, sometimes you make a, a frog leap in, in your progress. Yeah. Oh, my God. That said, I'm, I'm not kidding. I, and it was only a 24 a half pan set. Oh, it. It was just that I wish I could go back to those days. <laughs> it, I was mesmerized about the way it mixed. Uh, everything is true about you can make your own orange uh, and you can temper your orange. I mean, everything I, I tested out, uh, you know, I, I made swatches. Uh, I tried to make my first faces learning with the Jane Davenport online course. And that's actually a watercolor that was like the first real media. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you get sucked into the yeah, giant all the other stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then you're yeah. like lost for any reason. Yeah, you go down a very dark hole. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Sandra missed the pencil. Let's see. Uh, it's a pencil set from Arteza. Um, I got a coupon from them, so I used it on the, buying this portrait set. And it comes with um, pencils starting from 4H all the way up to 14B. So you got from hard to soft. And then it got some charcoal pencils and a white, and then it got this 
I think it's called a barrelless. What it's called when it's there's there's no wood around this one. It's just all. Oh, it's just one big lid, <laughs> and they're very soft. Yeah, I like and those. I sharpened these four ones, but before I did, I noticed that the core was totally in center. You know what we check for with prism mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So uh, it looks like it's good quality. And I even sharpened the charcoal ones and they didn't break on me. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing a little bit because I don't know about you guys, but look at, look at this lid. <laughs> look at the tip on this one. <laughs> look how big it is. Where? <laughs> It's it's square and super long. I've never seen a tip like this before. On my generic pencils, they look like this sharpened. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a little bit funny. I wonder what kind of a sharpener does this. But I have never been a fan of drawing with a, a humongous tip on my pencils. So when I look at the fabric shop and pencils like this, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting scared that it's going to snap and then end up in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, so skinny. So I unboxed this on Tuesday, so I haven't really played a lot with it. And this is an eraser. One of those old school, remember those? Oh, those when, are handy. Yeah. And then oh this God. one is really soft. I remember the old school one where this was like stiff nylon. <laughs> yeah. And then this is a waterproof ink pen called Inconic 0 0.4, which is a very fine, fine tip, just like the Settler uh, Stulus pen tip, but with waterproof ink in it which is nice so and then it also came with an eraser and an exacto knife so <laughs> oh Ian hi it's called a long point sharpener I'm scared of those long points <laughs> I know that a lot of people like to uh, sharpen their colored pencils and then they use them sideways they don't like use them tip first so. oh too much now i've got too much water on my brush Hi, Ian. just doing some negative painting Just to show the girls to start off simple. You've probably done quite a bit of neg negative painting, I would imagine. Okay, I'm going to dry this again. gonna grab a sponge I think that was a really good idea now I have to think where they are just a moment Find a sponge. I know that a lot of people got like fancy nature sponges. So I'm just going to take a regular kitchen sponge, chop it up, wet it a little bit, and see if it does the trick. So I got like one end to moist with, and then a dry one to suck up.
So one to wet with, and then the dry one to suck it up. Oh no, Janet, you're starting over. What, did your paper start to peel? <laughs> Eileen. <laughs> no, she isn't, that's like gold. <laughs> She wouldn't waste it. That's great, Ian. Now, a lot of uh, watercolorists do the uh, negative painting. It's fun. You can really get um, doing some awesome stuff with it. Oh, no, Janet. Maybe you should have wet the back side and it wouldn't buckle so much. Hey, I've seen Angela Fair. She's got this plastic um, tray or plastic surface she works on. So whenever she wet the backside of her paper, it just gets stuck to that plastic surface. So she doesn't even need tape to secure it. Yeah, there's quite a few artists that do that. They plexiglass or some sort of um, non-porous. Yeah, and, and hers got um, this um, just like, um, uh, what's it called? It's, it's, it's got like vales and, hills, vales and hills in it. So you can imagine that some sort of air is able to get in and dry oh, it up. Yeah. Or she can tip off excess uh, water. Mm hmm Go real dark now. Nice dark, dark. I'm gonna paint a ginger guy <laughs> with white eyelashes. Uh, eyelashes. So, so far, I know. <laughs> um, I'm going to introduce the purple color because I want to somehow uh, end up with some blue tones up here. So when I mix in the um, orange color mm -hmm. hopefully it will turn a little bit burnt sienna when it hits the blue and it doesn't matter that it clashes with my background so you know i just remembered you know there's a picture of um johnny depp as the uh, when he played in the um alice in wonderland i think he had white eyelashes he did oh there's something about, I don't know, there's just something, something about the expression of white lashes. But then you need to make a dark eyelid to make it stand out. You have to look them up, see what they did. Yeah. I remember it looking really striking, though. Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> I'm so happy that the cosmetic world haven't made it like a trend. Um, <laughs> something to look forward to <laughs> remember back in the 80s we used pink eyeliner on our lower uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I remember some people having the white yeah I mean yeah. But, but pink really made you look sick <laughs> yeah uh, but still you did it because it was like trendy and yeah. I went for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and I was uh, one of the blue mascara girls. And Were you? Really strange because I got brown eyes and brown hair. Yeah. So adding blue mascara is like, oh, <laughs> I thought I was so, so trendy and so beautiful. <laughs> you look back at your old pictures and you're going, Good Lord, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got my mud going on here. Now for the dark shit, the dark tone. Now I have to pick up a blue. I'm thinking ultramarine. I'm not going phthalo. That's so hysterical. I will never get that phthalo out of my... Or oh, maybe should I go phthalo because it's uh, fluorescent colors? 
would you put put would you choose a, a thalo over a cerulean or an ultramarine for what a fl fluorescent uh, chroma painting <laughs> what are you going to use it on though like the what part? i'm going sure. for it why I not can feel it uh, normally i really dislike working with thalos because they uh, eat up it's, it's a very dominating dominating pigment I think yeah. I'm going to use watercolor. It'd probably go good with the uh, fluorescence. Yes. Okay, I'm going to go crazy. You want the contrast. I'm thinking, why don't I do like a wash? Just a moment. Yeah, you could do like a splotchy. Yes. Yeah. I'm working up on my palette enough liquid for a wash. And then my um, pan size is the same as the Sakura Koi. Um, oh, yeah. Which is like really small. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take a while. <laughs> it does. And I'm like a very messy person. Well, especially if you're going to, you want the same. Yeah, and I want a lot of it <laughs> because I don't want to <laughs> run out of, of the wash while I'm doing it. Yeah. But I think you, sometimes you need an edge in these palettes where you can tip off the water on the side, you know, take the pigment out of your brush. Yeah, that's a good idea. I was so disappointed when Art by Mylene came out with her palette. You know, she works with really hysterical neon colors. So I was thinking, yes, finally someone who collected more than three neon colors in one palette. And <laughs> then I saw her palette and it was just a generic 24 or 12 piece palette. And oh, I felt so disappointed because we all got the generic starter palettes you know so we wouldn't mind buying a custom made palette um just like you know primas has a green palette for instance or okay, a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> but are they, are they all fluorescent none of them are fluorescent she only Ooh. got an opera pink um and then she's got a like a lilac made out of the opera pink um that's it <laughs> and i was so disappointed you know because her style of uh yeah she's very bright and she is maybe they're expensive to make or maybe the company that should uh, produce it for her wasn't sure that she was such a hit that they could get off with just a fluorescent palette yeah that could be But just seeing her her style, though, you would think that they would have. I actually tried to copy her in this book. I think I got it in this book. Ta-ta! <laughs> really oh, great. that's cute! In your face! Oh, I love it! Like, totally with her <laughs> llama. <love> her. <laughs> so, and then I just wrote, inspired by art by Marlene, but I don't think that anyone is in is in doubt with her wonky houses, beach houses. That's cute. <laughs> uh, because Lena, she used Senelier neon. Yes, exactly. I know she know she used the Senelier. No, not the Senelier. It's a Caran d'Ache, right? 
the Caran d'Ache um, colored flor neon pencils on top of them. Um, but I don't have them. <laughs> I thought she, was it that or was it Holbein? I thought it was uh, Caran d'Ache. Oh, maybe it is. I know Holbein has them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh my god, hold on, got a color pencil set with one tray just with neons. I know. Is it like 36? <laughs> it's really expensive, but it's very tempting because we all got the generic sets. So I got their full set. You do? Yeah. Here in <laughs> it's very expensive to get. We have to get it shipped from uh, Japan, so I don't yeah. have it. But there was somebody that was selling them in, on the Canadian um, Amazon, so I thought, oh. You have to, you know, make your move when you see yeah. sales like that, because with the import taxes going on, that set can be really pricey. Yeah, and I was surprised I had no uh, duty or anything on it. Wow. Yeah. You're lucky. I'm yeah. glad to hear. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. They're gorgeous pencils. I just love, you know, unboxing new pencils, taking yeah. off the trays, looking at it like it's eye candy right there. Yeah. <laughs> People looking at you like, what the heck? Yes. <laughs> you look at my beautiful pencil. <laughs> I want to let you in on the secret. You know what? My best in my head, if I think that my best colored pencils are my polychromos from Faber Castell. Yeah. But I don't know how to draw best with them because I rarely use them. Isn't that stupid? So it's like having a Mercedes in the garage, but because you never drive in it, you don't know how to drive, you know, best in it. So your best driving skills is going on with that old beater. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what's going on in my uh, craft room. So I need to stop being so stinky and then just break them out and enjoy because, yeah. It's stupid to uh, leave behind an unused set of polychromers when that time comes. <laughs> yeah. My son is just no throw them give them to their grandkids or something. I, I, don't, I think he would just throw them out. Like, <laughs> how many colored pencils does one guy need? <laughs> Okay, uh, Zandra, Karen Dosh and uh, Sennelier, she uses oh. red, which is hard to find. I saw a woman who's Russian, very, very talented, painting uh, florals, florals and roses. Mm -hmm. And she got uh, one of the Karen Dosh pink um colored pencils and oh my god it made such a difference uh, the way she layered it up uh, she ended up with a natural looking rose but that very hysterical neon underpainting lifted it up so the the petals looked uh, transparent oh well, that'd be nice yeah yeah it gave it more of a luminous look probably Yes, luminous, that's a good word for it. Like, uh, I don't know, really uh, like silk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now i got a fine mess going on here. <laughs> I need to dry it with a heat gun. But I got this strange muddy background that I was uh, requesting. No, um, I love that background. <laughs> Actually, right now, because I got other colors on my uh, camera, you might able to see what I'm talking about, like this flaming orange. No, still not. Ah, Can I take bummer. a picture? 
this is like really flaming orange next to a, a muddy background so it it just stands out uh, how can i tilt the paper so you can see yeah. it? I can it's, see it. it it's like it's luminous mm -hmm. and that's what i'm trying to make a darker messy background here to pop in some orange and when i'm making his hair i'm gonna lift off uh, the colors for his hair so but okay now i'm gonna hit it with a heat gun for maybe yeah. two or three minutes so i think i should mute <laughs> and this is where i click the button leave studio instead of mute just ask colleen and kathy <laughs> <laughs> Polys are best used for high detail. Yes, I agree. Because they're a harder lead polychromos. They are a little more um, harder to blend, though, I find. If you're doing, um, like, skin tones and that type of thing, they, they, depending on your paper, leaves it a little bit grainy looking. So they are a bit hard to uh, blend with another pencil. I suppose they are good if, if you have the um, uh, mineral spirits to, to work with that. I know there's a lot of pencil artists that use mineral spirits to blend. All right, so I'm putting a little bit of white I know you don't have to do this but <laughs> you can do whatever you want so I'm just gonna make a little eyeballs oh your fish looks so cute <laughs> I have to give them eyeballs for Dorothy Oh yeah, <laughs> she finds it spooky. Maybe I should work on my eyes first then. <laughs> <laughs> now, if I were, if I wasn't um, using pencil um, to draw each one of these out, then you, my pencil lines wouldn't show and you could actually go back in with a, a script liner and um, do detail shading around their bodies to punch you know show them a little bit more i actually like the pencil lines showing Do you? yeah yeah because it defines the fins and you know um i really like it yeah but you can go like it's crazy some of the artists that do just strictly this um some of the work they do is just unbelievable yeah it, as you can see it was easy to do it's just going keep going back overlapping your subject and then darkening each layer you do so you don't paint over your subject matter you just paint around them. So, and then you get dimension in your little fish. So it's easy. You guys should try it. It's fun. But it looks like a million, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's really like a, one of those things that is instant gratification to try out. Yeah, and you can do it with... Um, acrylic too and the acrylic ones are it's even easier and um you can you can go from black to light if you wanted to yeah so, so it's nice with the uh the acrylic i like doing the acrylic um better than the watercolor i think i think i have one in here i did a while ago What's particularly nice with the one you just made is that one single yellow fish in the center is the brightest of them all. Yeah. I like that effect. Let's see. 
I had where is it? I think it's in this book. be in my old one. I had one that I did. With... Let me see if I can find it. That's the worst part when you have to look up things <laughs> because we got so many journals. <laughs> we think we know, oh, it must be in that one because it was winter and I, I was, you know, using that as my winter journal. And then... <laughs> Thanks for coming. Well, there's another one of the uh, leaves. Oh, it's nice. Yeah, leaves are like really fun. And you can actually take real leaves from the garden and use as templates. Yeah. Um, I had one of. Oh. I'm sure it was in these. No, it's not. Oh, there, behind her. See? Oh, yes. Oh, that's awesome. It reminds me of the Dina Weekly. Uh, Night Diane. No, it is uh, Dina Weekly. Yeah, her, her uh, pencil? Ma yes, yeah. a mask. Uh, is it called a mask? When Yeah, there was a mask and a stencil yeah. together. So you could use either one. So I used the mask. And I just painted around it. That's awesome. You started with the woman right in the front. Yep, started with her. Yep. Yeah, and then worked my way back. So you can use them for backgrounds or, you know, whatever. They're great for um, florals. That type of thing too. Um, utter underwater scenes. Yeah. So, let's see what else we can do. Get my. Do some more on my book. Actually, I could put him in there too. Oh, he's so cute. Don't put a mask on him, even though it's fun. <laughs> I like your humor, but he's got such a nice expression. <laughs> what could you do? I think there was what was there was something I was thinking of putting on here. What was it? Oh, I know. Did my first day of gardening yesterday. Oh wow! Yeah. It is so nice that you have a, a garden to go out to. <laughs> have and I got a garden? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You gotta go and see my my tour video. I have spent time outside in the garden too. It just feels so, you know, like the safest place to be at these times. Well, you just kind of that's all you're thinking about is raking and clearing weeds and whatever else, eh? Yeah. So yeah, it's very rare that you can just relax 
and enjoy oh, and see work. You yeah. see what you, what you have to, what you're behind with. I love it. And then you can see the, what's coming up, that type of thing. Yeah. So nice. Uh, I need to dry this because uh, I'm making blooms now. <clears throat> so two minutes of heat gun. Yep. yep. So is anyone else gardening? It's a great time to do it. Relieve stress. <clears throat> so we did... Put some a rake here. So I did a bunch of raking because apparently I'm the only one that rakes leaves around here. <laughs> so everybody's leaves blows into my garden. <laughs> so I'm raking everybody else's leaves in the spring. But that's okay. Because I ended up putting um, all of them into a compost, a leaf compost. Because leaf mold, they call it, is excellent for your garden. <laughs> so I, I got free compost. <laughs> I still got so much to learn with that natural way of um, keeping a garden. I am so tempted when I'm down shopping to buy those chemical bags, you know, where you can just spray out some small, uh, looks like cat litter, and it takes, it fertilizes <laughs> and kills the, but we tried to make it like an organic garden because the first year we did all that, and it was, first of all, super expensive. Second yeah. of all, I burned off my lawn because I oh, added no. too much iron. Uh, so I told my hubby that I don't know how to use these things. <laughs> <laughs> so your you your um, country still allows you to use the um, weed killer and stuff? Oh yeah, big times. Like and people kills everything from dandelions to I don't know what. But we try to make the dandelions. Uh, at least bloom because it helps the population of bees. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we are going the opposite directions than on my neighbors, and they do look over the fence with this <laughs> chivious look in their <laughs> eyes because they are killing the dandelions, and I'm just letting them bloom. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they I are probably our country doesn't allow us having any pesticides or herbicides. And you know what? That's a good thing because we're just normal citizens. We don't grow things for the queen. I mean, <laughs> we, don't, we don't need having like a Pinterest garden, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just, you know, you just mow your lawn and it's all green. <laughs> so, yeah, you may as well. Never know. Maybe maybe by next year you'll be using it to for greens to eat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> True. Candy lion uh, salad. Yeah, it's actually very popular. You know, in the Michelin restaurants to decorate yeah. your plate with edible flowers. Yeah. Now I'm lifting up. Uh, some of my gouache, which is very uh, easy. I mean, gouache is almost easier to lift off for some reason than watercolor. Oh. Um, it's like lifting off watercolors with earth tones, you know, or ultramarine. Yeah. I don't know why it's different. But my plan is to add in where I lifted some fluorescent colors. And just like when you're gluing with napkins, you the wider a background you can glue a napkin to, the more the true napkin design will show. Mm -hmm. I think the same applies with full of fluorescent colors. The wider <laughs> the substrate, the more fluorescent. Yeah, definitely. 
I was like a really clumsy way of saying, don't layer with them if you want them to stand out. Yeah, they have to be pure. Yep. Yeah. It's turning into a girl. <laughs> I, I love it. I plan to make it a male and then it ends up being a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to follow it. Let's see, what else can I put here? Yes, sir, it pops. It pops. It's, it's, uh, I like it. I am, uh, <laughs> I'm really uh, into this, into this, uh, uh, what, what can you say? I am, um, well, now I can see it pop. It really pops. It's in my eye, like, like I'm using one of those highlighters. And this is just the first layer. I'm going to come in with yellow also. Yeah, it really pops against that background. And I'm going for that flaming, vibrating look. I'm not going to get that because it's not moving. It's still just uh, one dimension. Mm -hmm. Let's see. It's all right on there. <laughs> Looks like he's smoking. <laughs> <laughs> what? See, it's my rake, and it, when I close it, it looks like he's smoking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> that is like it's a thermometer. <laughs> <laughs> and imagine if you painted. What the room is standing on, it could look like he peed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's like wet where she's standing. <sighs> I love it. Have you ever tried to paint something and then you show it to another person and then they see something that you just totally overlooked? Yeah. Like, like, and you're mesmerized, like, why didn't I see that? <laughs> it happened to me on a paint along. Uh, I don't even know who made the paint along, but we should paint a water. I, I wanted to paint a waterfall in the forest. Mm -hmm. And then I was so happy about my drawing. I tweeted it on Twitter and everybody was cracking up because my waterfall looked like this giant penis. Oh, and then no. I had a silhouette of a rapid standing in front of a hill. And then I think it was Judy who wrote, I sure understand why that rapid got spooked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I really didn't see the penis shape at all. <laughs> I, I, I truly was. And the second I read it, I could see it like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> You were too were too much working on the you didn't look up and at the whole thing probably. Back then I was really uh, you know when you sometimes you're just lucky when you paint. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I had some really good lucks with the the white foam from the end of the of the waterfall. Yeah. Yeah, in two bubbles, but <laughs> <laughs> Turned out that I was actually making something else. <laughs> <laughs> I kept adding white to those. It turned out uh, those, <laughs> those bubble, those, uh, I kept adding white to it because I thought, oh, you know, the water would like foam up. <laughs> <laughs> really, really making Oh, Lena. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, I need to, um, I'm not done at all with the skin tone. This is just the first layer. I know it looks totally crazy, but uh, I'm going to continue. 
let's get some eyes in so dot doesn't fake let's see well, i like the blues though and the pinks mauves this is just the first uh but she needs to have this very disassembled clotting skin i think because the background is so messy and muddy mm -hmm. so it wouldn't look nice if i had like a seamless transitions from the colors in this face when the background is like a total mess But for sure, it's fluorescent colors is one of those either you like them or you really dislike them. Um, yeah, you know. Know, most most painters use them um, grade. Down. Well, they don't use them. They they have everything very um, toned down. They don't like a real bright color. No, because it's totally chroma and in your face and. Yeah. It's probably faded when the stream is over. <laughs> That's how it, Yeah. Yeah, their uh, light fastness is like next yeah. to nothing. True. And often when I watch people unbox a new watercolor palette and then they immediately trash down the opera row saying, Oh, I'm gonna take that out of my palette because uh, I don't like a non-light fastness color in my palette. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking no, give it a ch give it a chance at least. I mean, show the rest of us how to utilize that pan because it's popping up in 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 most craft. Uh, what oh, yeah. And said it's there, you know. So it is a beautiful color. It it is, and it, and it's a shame if people keep throwing it out because then we won't see tutorials where it's used that often. Yeah. No. I like it with uh, florals because there are a lot of florals with it, roses and um, some. There's some daisies out there that are that pink. And it is a little bit tough if you're just having a magenta. I mean, mm -hmm. to to make that um, what's it called? Um, like a step out from a deep magenta to the bright opera rose i mean that it's really tough <laughs> yeah true you're basically in the end just painting with water sometimes <laughs> <laughs> it's fun though i like it well and too if you're using it in your journal It'll stay around a little while. <laughs> yeah. It hasn't got the light hitting it. I'm really bad at not looking and flipping back in my finished journals. So I somehow know that my process is what's fun, you know, the creating process in itself, and then it won't be displayed when it's done. <laughs> so as long as it doesn't fade while I'm working with it, it's <laughs> paid its uh, dues or, you know, did its job. That might change, though. Um, once you start streaming and, and showing people your stuff, you tend to go back to it. Yeah. Especially these folders, too. Oh, it's, yeah. just, it's just not the art in it. It's also, if you're um, journaling your week or day or whatever it is you're doing yeah so we like to go back to that and look at both things that's the way i look at it but i remember once i was showing my early work with a picture on twitter to inspire people to keep on <laughs> mm -hmm. i just wanted to show them uh, that my toe was cringing when I saw <laughs> those early drawings that I made, but there were important steps to be learned from them. Yeah. Uh, then I was actually happy that I kept those journals around. 
to have them as a comparing, like to see how how far you become in your in some skills, you know. Oh yeah, I I really like going back and you're seeing what you tried, and sometimes you know you forget about those things and you try it again. Yeah, I've done that quite a few times. And oh yeah, I remember when I did that. I should give that another try. <laughs> Kind of like a little tool. These are the <laughs> the <laughs> <Iron> <laughs> March. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> They're worried. <laughs> yeah. So I'm putting it under the March. <laughs> Joan ask, uh, what is a masked Avenger, Ian? <laughs> don't don't get Ian started. <laughs> he will he will paint you an Avenger in the next coming up the next few days. <laughs> I know Ian. <laughs> um, let's see. He the sex chains, Lena. What is that? Uh, Maybe I, okay. Maybe it's an old comment. <laughs> oh my God! Thank you, Ian. You will have to wear your underpants on outside of your pants. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the trademarks with superheroes. They wear <laughs> spandex for some reason. Spandex is the stuff to go to the material. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> Flashing your underpants. <laughs> And then hanging out with, a, if you're a grown man, if you take Batman as an inspiration, hanging out with a 16-year-old teenager <laughs> on the side. I'm just going to do some of my daily journaling I think I got some stuff down here with me so March it's got a little snow but I think we're having an early spring this year I don't think that we actually had winter at all here in Denmark. It just went from, I don't know, something that's very like spring till spring. Really? Yes. And I think it's kind of spooky and scary. And I actually predict that we're going to have a lot of issues when summer comes because um, some things in nature needs frost to kill the population of, I don't know, I, I just re remember that there's going to be a lot of bugs and stuff like that. Yeah, you do need, yeah, yeah it kills the black flies. And um, yeah, it's also actually bad for animals like wild animals, deer and um, moose, oh, yeah. that type of thing, because they get a disease. Yeah. Too many of them. Oh. And mm. because it's a mild winter then they're not um they don't die off at all which you know sad to say but you do need them to die off or yeah. you end up with this disease which is really bad wasn't that that happened in finland with the reindeers last year yeah so i think many so. of them had this uh, common um, they like, go crazy yeah yeah like uh it's almost like a mad cow thing yeah but with deer and then see if they poop then other animals eat that poop oh yeah <laughs> it spreads to them so it's not good
So anyone one, uh, doing their folders? Playing along? I haven't worked much in my March, uh, but I'm going to. <laughs> got some ideas now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've got enough to write about, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, a lot of things have changed. Mm -hmm. I tweeted today that I wanted to spread a rumor about young men in particular could fight off the virus if they walked around naked. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. Time for them to give back something to the community. <laughs> <laughs> That would really make me want to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> and then I also wrote that, hey, they wouldn't be like, like, you know, there is the social distancing rule. So <laughs> they could walk in peace. You know, it's not like we would have <laughs> Awesome, Colleen. So as you can see, I got two <laughs> this isn't a folder but it's a it's just a i don't know what you'd call it uh it's not even daily it's like <laughs> it's, it's it's just like a diary but it's whenever i want to put stuff in it and those are the best because then you don't feel obligated mm -hmm. to keep it up because that's the baddest thing if people feel guilty about, oh, I haven't written in it. So then they tend never to return to it. <laughs> yeah, it becomes a chore. Yeah. You and, know, you know, nobody wants a chore that it should be something you want to do. Yeah. Not, not dread, <laughs> basically. And you see that a lot in the planner community where people set up the perfect planner. And then mm -hmm. because they didn't return to it for 14 days, it just keeps lying in the drawer. Yeah, and then they get upset with themselves and yeah, it gets left and they give up altogether. Which is, you know, I just continue. That's what I do. If I don't do it for 14 days, then I just start. Well, couldn't have been much going on then. <laughs> <laughs> And I think if you read, have you ever read some, uh, I've read some books written as journals and I did not read the date. It's not like I noticed like this is Sunday and ooh, now it's only, and it's Sunday Thursday. You know, you don't really, uh, if you go back and read what you did, you don't take that much notice to the mm -hmm. chronology of the dates. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Colleen says, cutting out fish. I couldn't do the technique. So using the watercolor paper, cutting is easier to me. So you're what, what are you doing? You're, you're coloring your watercolor paper and then putting it down? You'll have to show me when you're um, on next. You're on tomorrow, aren't you? You could be making a new thing, <laughs> you could be doing something. <laughs> You'll have to show me. There's all kinds of ways of doing stuff. Nothing's a complete rule. That's the way I look at it. If it doesn't work for you, try something new. So what I'm doing, I'm just putting some stuff on just to decorate the papers and then I'll come back later and write my um, whatever I've written in another book in here. That's the way I like to do it. And then I don't feel pressured. 
that I have to come every single day and, and put art and whatever on it. That's nice. Yeah. <clears throat> so you can use, you know, pretty well anything in these too. You could do it the same way you're doing your folder. You can use um, jelly prints, scrapbook paper. I'm going to use some stencils. So really, there's no wrong way of doing this. So I'm just going to look through my stencils here, see what I want to put in there. What I like the most is that certain things put us in a certain memory emotion state. Yeah. So if, um, I don't know, if if a certain bird reminds you of spring, then you can just by placing the bird, it, it's, it substitutes sometimes writing that spring arrived, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I really like that um, non-doodling kind of visual journals. Yeah, that's what I like. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to put some paint in here. Okay. Uh, okay. Coloring the watercolor paper, then cutting out fish shape. Um, who was it that used to cut out its art, Matisse? I don't know. Not sure, Ian. Let's see. <clears throat> cut. Uh, who was it that used to cut out? His art, his art, Matisse. Mm. I don't really remember anyone that did that back then. Pretty sure it must have been tempting for those who did cubism. You know, just cutting out the squares and placing them, layering them on top of each other. Yeah, you wonder how people got those ideas back then when everything was so strict about what was right. I mean, even plein air just going out was like yeah. revolting for some. Uh, I think it was Matisse after his eyesight. Oh, okay. Could have been then. Now this is just craft paint, so I can actually go back on this and um, write. <laughs> It sounded like crap paint and not craft paint. <laughs> no, craft paint. <laughs> crap paint. Oh, dear. I made myself a really funny nose. Look, uh, this is totally out of proportion. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That is the most wicked nose of the month. <laughs> I think that's why I need the banana. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> This is one of those times where you just have to lift it all. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> oh. 
Now, in those cases, Bye. have a good day. Yep. Bye bye. <laughs> See. <laughs> in those cases where you did something that really off, do yourself the favor and tilt up your sketch. Yeah. Because it's laying flat, eh? you get a skewed way of looking at things. You do? Yeah. And then instead of holding your pencil like this, because it's impossible to draw in that angle, <laughs> you do the pencil like this. And then you just, with small lines, try and re-sketch it back in. And my paper is wet, so I need to dry it before I hit it with a pencil. Just a second. <laughs> Jilly says to put the face mask on her. <laughs> That'd fix it. You know what, Chloe? Goodness sakes. And then I just try with small lines. Um, I'm not making like one straight line. I'm just gently trying to place it back in because now I know that <laughs> it's off to begin with. So uh, it, I can very easily making it, make it off twice mm -hmm. because I know myself. <laughs> Okay, I got an issue up there where I put some acrylic uh, paint pen. And to get rid of that, you can take an X-Acto knife and then scratch the surface of the paper because that line up there with the white highlight is uh, really interfering with the curve of the nostril. <laughs> And I'm just gonna get white paper underneath, but it's better better than having an off highlight. I mean, that's like the worst. <clears throat> and now I'm improvising. <laughs> I got white paper above the nostril. So if I put paint on it, I will still know I did that error. So to avoid, Getting it so uh, visual, I'm going to scrape off even more paint because that gives me a wider white surface to have to cover up. So my error will be kind of hidden better like that. And you have to scrape really gently, <laughs> depending on the paper you're using. Um, I mean, a Jane Davenport uh, watercolor? Journal, watercolor journal, but it's not, it's like, it's very similar to the Strathmore 400 series. So it's, it's not that thick of a paper. But. Okay. Yeah. Can you see how I I, I uh, removed more with my exacto knife than just the white uh, acrylic line? Yeah. So now I, I got a, a bigger area to put in new pigments instead of just that line. <laughs> but that's how you get rid of a acrylic marker <laughs> doodle <Yeah>. pen. <laughs> how you learn how to fix things too. Yes. <laughs> It happens so fast, you know, when you're off with something. Yeah. Then you just keep continuing painting, thinking this looks kind of wonky, but maybe I can fix it with <laughs> my brush. And then suddenly you're just way off. <laughs> <laughs> and now when I have to reapply new watercolor here, a good trick is to wet more area than you need to. Do you usually draw on an easel? Uh, yes, I tried to. I, I got a table easel, so it's uh, slanted like this. And then yeah. I like to make, um, uh, is it called a washcloth? Um, I, I like to make a sausage of wash, wash, a washcloth, like, or like a towel. <laughs> yeah. 
that my pages are resting on and they suck up all the water that flow that comes down so i can just be a really messy pig <laughs> And then I also use that sausage to wipe off my uh, my brush. Mm -hmm. But when I'm streaming, I have to wipe up on a kitchen roll. <laughs> and then I like to um, sometimes I take my uh, my journal if 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 it's like a big journal, and yeah. then I rest it on the edge of my table. And then with my thumb, I'm holding the journal and uh, can tip it back and forth on the edge of my table. So I can, if I make a wet wash, I can make it stop running immediately down. Oh, okay. Stop it halfway and then I can tip it backwards up. And it's mostly when I'm doing skies, then the cerulean, I apply it too lightly. Mm -hmm. So all the pigment disappears oh, wow. from the top. So that's how I, I kind of try and by tipping it back and forth to make the blue pigment stay up here. <laughs> So I can definitely see the brightness of the hair. Oh, it's flaming. I'm telling you right here there. And the, I think the trick is to uh, do it as you would with highlights. Don't overdo the saturated parts too much. Mm -hmm. Just do it in, in small places. So I got a saturated part here, here. I'm going to make one here <laughs> and on the nose tip and then right here at the temple and then something up here also. Oh, so I get yeah. like and, and I can't that look good. It. So I hope I like the color. <laughs> but it's fun to um, experiment with. It's really something different than just regular watercolor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's different. It's kind of acrylic, but it isn't. Yeah. sponges oh there they are i have so much stuff on my desk <laughs> <laughs> you have a huge desk and you have like uh you know foot and a half by two feet that you work on <laughs> and all the rest is full <laughs> it's just like when scrapbooking you always work yourself into that six by six in square <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you always like crammed in oh chloe yeah <laughs> it is so cute when they say that noise i actually made my neighbor's dog cry yesterday <laughs> I could hear that she put him out in the in the garden, like yeah. he, like I don't know if he did, if he had an accident or what was going on, but it really sounded like get out, you know, like, oh, like he's in yeah, he was in trouble, and then he runs to the fence where I'm standing on the opposite side of the fence, and then I start talking with him like, oh, well, you're a bad boy, you know. <laughs> And then because I know they got a cat, I'm telling him, yeah, I know, I know, the cat can poop in the house. <laughs> and then when I finished that sentence, the dog said, oh, <laughs> <laughs> like you freaking understood. That was hilarious. So He probably did understand the word poop. Oh, maybe he did. <laughs> <laughs> I just pictured in my sick imagination that he must have had an accident or something since he was banished to the garden. <laughs> but sometimes I feel that I am, uh, what's it called when you are using someone else's things? You are a. Um, uh, a mite or what's it called when you're like ah oh, there is a word for it when you are 
uh, taking advantage of someone else's stuff or something. What's someone that word for it? Um, I just want to say that sometimes it's like I am using their dog as a, I'm freeloading on their dog because he <laughs> barks when someone comes into my driveway also. Isn't oh. that a luxury? <laughs> And I sometimes feel that, uh, oh, I'm so lucky. <laughs> I, I don't have to feed him or anything. And still he's a watchdog from my <laughs> drive-in also. The best of two worlds. It is. Don't have to clean up after him. Don't have to feed him. He got out once. Oh my God. And then this son, he's like 12, 11, 12 years or something. I just see this dog running like a freak down the road. And the, <laughs> I was running immediately after it because, you know, there's cars and traffic and stuff. And then the son of the house, he was running behind me. And we had to track down this dog and then uh, get get it back into the house without a leash so we had to like hold him in the in that collar he had and then I noticed that the neighbor's son was not wearing any shoes oh my god <laughs> that's how fast he, he escaped the, the dog and then <laughs> just ran for it <laughs> <laughs> that's like one time when I came home when my uh, son was living with me they had um, two dogs and I had a dog. And uh, their dogs was a Doberman Pinscher and a Rottweiler. Ooh, that's a big one. <laughs> and I had a tiny little seven-pound dog. And I came um, home from work, and they weren't home. And I opened the door, and all of them bolted out the door. <laughs> oh, my God. Which one to get first, right? I know. I was like, ah! Oh Luckily, my. I grabbed the Doberman. <laughs> What they saw was out the front window was another dog and his owner walking down the street. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I was running down the street after the two of them. Oh my gosh. You know, for a Rottweiler coming down the street after you, a lot of people wouldn't appreciate that. And because he's free, or what's it called? He's got this crazy expression in his face. You know how dog can looks like when they're like really happy, like yeah, yeah. I'm going for it. <laughs> that crazy look. You know? Oh dear. But she she was a good dog. She'd never do anything. She's a little teddy bear, but m the breed is very um people associate it with being mean and that type of thing. A lot of people here in Denmark afraid of those they call them uh, fight dogs for some reason oh, yeah. um but I've, I've i think most of them actually are very um family oriented like like they are they're like uh, really gentle dogs <laughs> they just look uh they look fierce they look fierce yeah yeah well well I, <laughs> actually we were the house, somebody came in the house one time when none of us were there. <laughs> and uh, I don't know whether they were planning on robbing it, broke in. But um, <laughs> the, when we got home, the door was wide open. Oh, my God. And all three of them were sitting there. So I'm thinking they probably stepped in and saw the dogs. And yeah. Left. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the dogs didn't go out, or nope, nope, they stay right in the house, which was surprising because I didn't it think they'd do that. But maybe they stayed because they knew that something unusual happened, so they want to tell. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, Cypress, that's the Doberman. If you run, <laughs> he runs after you, and with his front legs, he grabs your legs and trips you. <laughs> Right. So you never get away, that's for sure. <laughs> He's sneaky, that one. He's the one that ate all my butter tarts. 
<laughs> oh no. Oh no. Two dozen butter tarts fresh out of the oven. <laughs> Was he constipated? No. no. He didn't get sick or nothing. And I walked in the kitchen and he had he have you ever seen a dog smile? <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually. Um I follow the Shiba Eno club on Facebook. I don't have a Shiba Eno dog, but that's one of the races that's actually able to look like it's smiling. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's what he was doing. <laughs> oh, smiling. So oh, you caught me. <laughs> <laughs> so happy. Yeah. <laughs> I got a lip situation here. <laughs> I got a silicone. I don't know. I just got a situation here with the lips. <laughs> I think I can save it by putting in some dark value, uh, going in with a dark pencil. I got something really funky going on here with her dark lips. Oh man, I can barely draw. I'm gonna get up and walk out of the room and hope that the cat follows me to the kitchen. So I'm just gonna be gone for two minutes. <laughs> See if it works. Yeah, my dogs are wanting to eat. I still laugh about Kathy's Jack eating the turkey for Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> that is hilarious. Oh, I hope he wasn't sick, though, because turkey's not good for dogs. He's dreaming of that for the rest of the year. And next yeah. year's it come, like, oh, that year. Yeah, and they have a memory, boy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they know. Yeah. Oh, look, old habit. I'm about to go in with a black. When you taught me on earlier streams that I should try more like burnt sienna, raw umber, mm -hmm. or sepia. Yeah. Let me try a middle tone like a sepia. But that's how uh, old habits, good or bad, <laughs> just stuck with you when you're doing things. Yeah, they. You do, you get stuck doing things a certain way. Yep. Oh gosh. Now I have the other one winding upstairs. Oh, maybe we should end stream soon if they're about to have an accident on the floor. No, they want to eat. <laughs> uh, it's hunger. Oh. That's what they're wanting. Oh, no, Debbie. <laughs> Let's see what she wrote. <laughs> he must have had the runs after that. <laughs> oh, my God. It's sometimes it's funny if they eat like a tennis sock or something. Oh yeah. They literally poop out cotton the next yep. day. <laughs> and you're mesmerized thinking, oh my God, how can their inner uh, stomach handle these things? No, <clears throat> it's amazing. <laughs> Let's see. These are just um, paint swatches, but they would be cool for journaling on. 
They sure would, and they're so nice. Mm -hmm. All um, matte, not glossy, so you can actually maybe go over them with colored pencils. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what is the trick? You got it for free, you just walked in. Yep, and just walk in and take them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I have to try that. Oh yeah, that's what they're there for. Yeah, people take them all the time for swatches. And they do know that us women are the one who decide those things, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Let's see, I could cut them apart, maybe. so I could have four days on here. So I could do one there. Kathy, mm -hmm. you can make a week like Monday black. Yeah. And then <laughs> slowly getting brighter, brighter till Friday. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Let's see. Polar white, lavender ice, blue orchid, and violet stone. Oh, I got to go feed these guys. Yeah, maybe we should end stream. I am um, <clears throat> also kind of done here. Oh, what I like how you did that. I love uh, that yellow under the chin. Yeah. <laughs> Some places needs help with the, like, like for instance, here. You can see how even though I, I dislike a total outline of a face, I don't like that. I like it to be broken up. So you can see how it needs help. To sometimes pop. it works. Yeah, like here, I you could also need a help from just one black line and then a total yellow. Now I don't have. Um, I can just do it with colored pencil. Mm -hmm. like you can see how it needs help <laughs> to pop. But yeah, I think uh, overall it looks uh, kind of funny. <laughs> Either you like it or you really dislike it, uh, the fluorescent colors. No, I like the fluorescents. Uh, but what they can do, if you're really good, is stuff like maybe here, like you can flame up yeah. areas. Um, I could be more bold with the eyes. Uh, I think I'll try that off camera. <laughs> but, um, it was fun. Yeah. Well, what a a good. I'm glad we got on. I don't know what was going yeah. on before, but <laughs> yeah. And then I still got a funny mouth there. So for your screenshot. Just <laughs> <laughs> the banana. <laughs> oh my god. My new tool. <laughs> tape, the, oh, tape the banana on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he slapped that on my, on my table and then just left. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for coming, Lena. Thank you for having me, Kathy. It was fun as always. I really enjoy painting together with you. Yeah, it was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed and you're doing all well and you're safe at home. And trying to relax a bit yep. by doing some work. Try it. it. It is relaxing. Or get out there and do some gardening if you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it helps too. So we'll see you guys later. And I think the next one that streams is Colleen, if I'm right, on Friday. Yep. I think tomorrow. It's already tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, yep. thank you, Nina, and we'll see you guys later. Yep. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.